Hello, my name is Benjamin Pitts, and I'm presenting this milestone booklet for Business as Usual. That's my group, and uh, nobody else kind of wanted to work on it, so I guess it's just me, and I'm trying to pull the weight for our group. It's kind of improv. It's going to be uh, last minute, but um, I'm trying to get some kind of grade for myself, um, you know, pushing hard, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So I wanted to skip all the way to the characters because um, that's what it asks us to do is go over the characters. So, <laughs> okay, so here we have Bob. And in management, Bob is not very, um, he's very hands-off. So he lets the salespeople kind of do whatever they want. So in our scenario, it's Bill Curry Ford. And Bill Curry's the owner, of course. And Bob is one of the many it's kind of this flat organizational structure with a manager over every division so you have like uh maybe like a sales team like a marketing team type of deal and bob is the sales team manager manager for the salespeople on the floor so basically he's kind of he's he's older so he's he's old school and he lets the salespeople whenever they have a problem an interpersonal problem he lets them solve it themselves he 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 says it builds character is what bob would say so he lets all the characters sort things out and um this creates problems in that you know maybe people who are not used to that maybe people who are used to more structure um you know, they gotta grow a spine, I guess. <laughs> and uh, it makes them, uh, it might make them uncomfortable. They have to actually go out and, uh, you know, talk with the other people and figure out what they're doing. So we have Michael. And where Michael comes in, he's the main antagonist of our story. And he looks kind of default now, kind of happy, whatever. But he's, uh, he's conniving. Basically, what he does is he kind of misleads people into buying things they can't afford. Buy, like, maybe, let's say a customer has, like, $500 a month to spend. And there's this car that's, like, 25000 And over 48 months, it'd be around 500 somewhere. Um, and that's fine. But he's like, well, why don't you get this car? And it's like... It's like double the cost, but then he, it's like double the length of the loan. So it's like a, it's like an eight year loan or a nine year loan over the 48 months. But people don't really think about it. It's just like, oh, months. But now you're stuck with this, this car for nine years versus like getting like something for 25 and being done. And it's like a very American thing, but I think people get really tired of their cars really quickly sometimes. And they're like, some people would rather just get a new 25 every three or four years or something. I've seen a lot, seen it happen a lot. It's a very American consumerist thing. But, um, but now you're stuck with this $45,000 car for 10 years. And they don't really think about that because it's put in months. And Michael is very... You know, open about trying to push the the new features and the looks and like it's not quite unethical but it's it's just somewhat misleading it, like people shouldn't you know he's doing it to people who have no place buying a car that expensive like and sometimes it leads to problems down the line, line where they default and they can't afford the payments anymore. But that doesn't matter to Michael because he's not he's in the sales division. He just sells cars. That's all he cares about. Commission. That he's like, oh that's up to the financial team to take care of. So now we have James. And James is new. He's new to the block. He is um somewhat naive and gullible. And malleable so where james cut so james the main problem and why michael is an antagonist to our story is because james wants to buy a new car the problem is it's not a ford and james works at bill curry ford and <laughs> james wants to buy something else um a different model make 
So he wants to buy maybe a European car, like a Mercedes or something. So, or a Volkswagen. So, the problem is, Jane, uh, Michael, he discusses it with Michael, kind of brings it up. He's like, oh, I'm getting a new car. I want to get a, a Mercedes or something. So Michael uh, is like, no, why don't you get a Ford? And it's like really pushing him to to get commission off his own you know, his own worker, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, so, like, I don't know why James couldn't just get the commission himself if he was gonna buy a Ford, but maybe Michael frames it to where he's doing Michael a favor, Michael's like, oh, you'd be my best friend, and James is kind of new there, so maybe he wants to build a friendship with Michael, so there's a lot of, like, peer pressure at play, at play here to try to get this car. From Bill Curry. Um, so James has to discuss with his wife, Emma, who we have here, in one of the episodes, episode three, in that he has to discuss with her and talk about what they're going to ultimately decide on. Because Emma is an interesting character because she's she knows that James is torn between these two uh, decisions. They're very... Um, I forgot the word, but it's like encompassing, basically. And the thing with them is that if James goes and buys a Ford, he might he's going to regret it later, is what she believes. And it's always going to be brought up, especially if she helps if she helps him commit to that decision. Like, oh, what if Emma says like, oh, buy the Ford? Well, he's gonna. He's going to take out some of that resentment on her down the line and may put strain on their marriage. But on the other hand, we have um, him buying the Mercedes, and maybe it's a little... It's, the money is not a problem for them. It's more about the interpersonal relationships with the people at the Ford dealership. So on the other hand, what if James buys a Mercedes? Well, Michael's not going to like him. Michael may create problems for him at the dealership. Maybe throw him under the bus because Michael is a top seller at Bill Curry Ford and James is kind of new. And James has a good reputation for being nice to the customers and whatnot, but maybe maybe that reputation could be construed as naive or maybe too goody goody. He's just he's losing sales because he's too upfront, letting them know everything. And maybe Michael could prey on that and create problems for him at work. So there there are considerations to be made in buying the Mercedes. And then we have Kurt and uh I guess it's his friend in the service department. So he's kind of a very minor character and he comes in to help try to convince James and on the Ford, actually, because he's very, he has friends, with, he's friends with Michael, but uh, the, he actually can pull some strings and maybe get a better deal on the Ford for Michael. So as far as um, management concepts, well, as I discussed earlier, we have to consider, we have to plan things. Um, it's a very big financial decision. So in chapter two, we're talking about the, the gravity of making such a decision. It's a lot of money and you're committing to it. You're stuck with it for a few years. So you have to consider maybe the present value of a dollar and of an annuity or something and figure out which car may be worth more in eight years because maybe the Mercedes, you'll have to take out a larger loan versus a shorter loan on the Ford. Um, you also have to consider the interpersonal relationships between James and Michael. <laughs> Sorry about that, I forgot his name for a second. So, Emma, in this episode, Emma also sees that something is bothering James. But that's not exactly a management um concept uh so on episode three 
uh, Emma tells James to stand up for himself, and he maybe make a <laughs> make a decision basically because he's not really um, he's being wishy washy. And there's a lot of times where you can't sit on the sidelines and let other people dictate your life. So Michael um, thinks it's convincing, maybe, but he gives it one last go and tries to go to Bob. He escalates it to Bob and tries to get Bob to uh, maybe mitigate the problems between, like maybe the fallout if James decides to go for a uh a foreign brand so basically um he's making a power play and attempting to if he goes for the like it will turn it in his favor to go for the mercedes basically if he goes for that maybe he can get um michael to leave him alone in the aftermath and maybe it'll be on paper that he attempted to talk to bob in case anything in the future comes up as a negative consequence of buying the Mercedes. But Bob just doesn't really, he doesn't really care. He's just like, you two gotta sort it out. So that's Bob. Again, he's, he just doesn't care, I guess. He's a really bad manager. So, <laughs> um, and then at the end, he ends up deciding to buy the Ford anyway. He thought a long time and he just didn't, he, Michael really just, he really didn't want to give Michael the sale, but, uh, you know, Michael really coaxed him over and said he's going to be nice or whatever. And then um, he actually got some sales benefits because his friend Kurt pulled some strings and got him a good deal. So in the end, he's going to long for that. Um, he's going to long for that foreign car, but in the end, he got the Ford. And he can always buy a new car later. It's not like he can, it's It's harder to, you know, build relationships with Michael, I guess. So, that's it for our presentation. As far as reflections, working with the group, it's been a struggle at times. Um, especially because it's online and it's hard to hold people accountable for what they're doing. And there's a lot of like, oh, I'm doing this. But... <laughs> you can't really tell what they're doing. So um, that's about it. Thank you for your time. And it's been a great class as a aside from the problems. <laughs> aside from the group problems. So thank you.